Cameras ready? Yep. All right. Uh, just closing out the game last week. Uh, you know, I thought it was a good football game. Uh, you know, just obviously, there's things we, we got to work on and, and continue to get better at. But just overall, that was a good football game between two good teams that, that, that played hard, played uh, played good football. Uh, you know, as a fan of the game, it's, it's one that I would enjoy, uh, have enjoyed watching. Uh, you know, so uh, but we're, we're very fortunate to come out of the game with a win, uh, get back on a uh, good track. I thought the things we did in the bye week really helped us. Uh, I thought we were fresher, uh, you know, looked faster out there uh, and continued to make progress and improvements. Uh, you know, I think the best thing about the game was just the environment of the, of the stadium, the, the, the students. Students have been awesome. I mean, they have been absolutely outstanding this year. And, uh, you know, the more we can continue to build on that and get more and more people here and being loud and uh, really helping to impact and be a factor in, in, in the outcome of the football games here at home, really, really setting up a, a really nice uh, building blocks for, for what we want to continue to do with that. So uh, I just want to take a minute and thank all the students, all the fans that were there at the game, but in particular the student body that's continued to show to come out and, and support their fellow uh, uh, classmates here at Georgia Tech. So really appreciate that uh, from, all, from all the students and look forward to the next time. Um, you know, a couple players of the week uh, from the game. Uh, defensively, JJ, uh, I mean, just he was active. It was, it was all get out. He was all over the place. Uh, got his first start on Saturday, you know, opposite of Zeke. And, and man, he was he was a, a force in the, in the run game, a force in, the, in, in, in being able to affect the quarterback, some t a couple TFLs. So really proud of JJ and the development he's had, and, and, and the job that Jess has done with him, uh, you know, over the last, you know, the, you know, really the first six games. Offensively, uh, gave it to, to the offensive line and, and Rylan Godey. Uh, you know, a couple guys down at the tight end position, and you know, I think Rylan played 70 plus plays in the football game and just you know, blocks his tail off. Played as good a football game as he's played. Uh, up to this point and was really excited uh, for him to be able to get out there and have that success and kind of the journey he's been on. And then the, the, along with the offensive line, I thought they uh, got back in a groove again and in the fourth quarter were able to do what we wanted them to do and what we needed them to do uh, to be able to, to, to win the football game. So, uh, you know, along with JJ, I'm, you know, I've been, been proud of the defense and the uh, improvements they've made uh, week to week. We've still got a long way to go. Uh, and if you ask Tooch, he'll, he'll agree with that. Um, you know, we met on Sunday morning going over the game and you know, he it's it's really cool to have you know some coordinators that really have the same mindset and the same belief and thoughts that I do of, of improvement and you know nothing's ever going to be perfect but you know you're not gonna you know you're not gonna sit there and uh, kiss the crack of their butts you know all day long when uh, we still got a lot of improvement to do so uh, but I've been proud of the defense, especially, uh, particularly the run defense. I think we're improving uh, dramatically in that in that regard, and we were much better on third downs, getting off the field on Saturday. We got to continue that this week, going into a <clears throat> you know a conference game on the road, early kickoff uh, versus a, a very talented uh, uh, you know, UNC roster. Uh, they've had a you know tough stretch the last the last couple of weeks, and. Those are the scariest teams to go up against. They really are, man. I mean, they they they, they were playing at home, playing early. Uh, you know, they got some things going on up there, and to have those guys uh, know the talent they have, know and see the you know the the, the glimpses of how they played in a lot of time, uh, a lot of times this year. So uh, it'll be a challenge for us on Saturday. We're looking forward to it. Looking forward to going against Coach Brown. Uh, he's just one of the uh, you know the activists, the active active winning as coach in college football. I think he's, what, sixth or seventh all time. Um, it's, I, I know Mike has it in his notes here. Sixth. Sixth all time winning as coach. 279 career wins. I mean, Matt, just a, a legend in the game to be able to compete against. So we're excited. The team's excited. And uh, we need to continue to have a good week of preparation to be able to go up there and, uh, and uh, play a good football game. Okay. Coach, talking about the improvements in the run game, I mean, what are, it's easy to just say, oh, it's been a big jump and been improvements, but what are kind of the focal points that you look at and say, this is why I've seen so much improvement? Yeah, you uh, you, we broke that down on, ow, uh, broke that down on Sunday. Uh, there's, number one, I think the depth on the defensive line has helped a ton. I mean, those guys are playing 25, 30 plays in, in a game 
there were times last year we had guys playing 60, 65 plays a game, so they're, they're fresher. Uh, you know, the scheme is what we talked about through the whole process back in uh, when, when Tooch came on and Jess came on of how we play the game, uh, how we play the blocks up front. Uh, you know, we're not a, you know, necessarily a penetrating, gap penetrating, disruption type uh, front, uh, and that's going to lead, you know, especially normal downs, uh, first and second down, you're not going to have the, the pressure back on the quarterback, but you're also not creating those, those vertical seams in the, in the defense. Uh, flat walling it um, and, and allowing the, the linebackers to be able to run free and, and make those plays. So uh, I think the defensive line understanding and learning the game. Um, Jess, is you all heard me say it before, Jess is such a great teacher. Uh, and, and then with, with, with Tooch behind, you know, with the linebackers, those guys playing together as one unit. Uh, and then I think they're playing, they're playing hard. You know, I think that's something that we want to be the identity of our football team is how hard we play for four quarters, and those guys are doing that. Kelly. You guys did a good job with Star Thomas this past week, but now you, you play probably one of the best running backs in college football in Marion Hampton. How is it making that adjustment to, to playing, you know, one of these run-heavy run teams like that that also will take shots and, and yeah. trying to get your defense ready for that? Yeah, you know, they're, they're, you hear about, about the running back all the time, and, and, and rightfully so. He's a good, good, good football player. Um, I mean, really good player. But when you look – at their their offense, they're they're pretty balanced. I mean, I think they're you know 55, 45 somewhere in there as far as run pass. So it's not like they're lining up and running 65, 70 percent of the time. And you can just load the box. I mean, they are going to um, you know add in the RPOs and the add-ons and the uh, and then and take their shots down the field. Which you know their last game they're trying to get a few more of those shots down the field vertically. Uh, so you know it's a challenge. We got to be able to make sure we're reading our keys. We get aligned with the, with the tempo, uh, reading our keys. Uh, that's going to be big, especially at the the second and third level, uh, you know, for the run pass. And then we've got to be able to control the front, up, up, you know, control the game up front, and uh, not. I mean, obviously, the D lines the one position doesn't have conflict run pass, uh, <coughs> the way they play the game. So, but we've got to be sharp with our keys and our reads. Obviously, on the other sideline, Jeff Collins as well. Just thoughts on seeing him again and, and facing his defense. Yeah, I mean, I wish nothing the best for Jeff, uh, except for this Saturday. <laughs> yeah, so uh, good football coach. Uh, you know, he's on the staff with good football coaches. Uh, it's the first time we've gone up against someone that uh, we've worked with before. Coach Key, on the fourth quarter, those two drives, the first one especially, a thing of beauty. Was there something that set that off? Fourth quarter, uh, the 85 yard drive on the first possession, of course, followed it up on the next one with a, another long scoring drive. Anything different to set that up, or was it just a matter of the way things fell out and worked together? You know, when you when you play a game, something I've learned a long time ago, you, the, the, the first quarter of the game, you're, you're seeing the flow of the game. You know, guys kind of get through their openers, opening scripts offensively, the opening calls on defense, start to settle into the game in, in the second quarter. Uh, third quarter, uh, you've come out of halftime. Uh, you know, it, it usually is a pretty, you know, unless it's just a lopsided game. Uh, fourth, or the third quarter is usually that quarter that, that's pretty balanced. And, 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 and fight. this is overall, this isn't just last game. And then the fourth quarter becomes where you, you use your best stuff. You know, what, what, what were your best calls? You know, you know the game. You know how they're playing the game on both sides. And then situational football. I mean, that, that's what it comes down to in the fourth quarter is the situational football and, and being able to use your best stuff. And uh, we, we preach all the time with our guys about being able to take games to the fourth quarter, uh, that we're going to play for four quarters. And, you know, the body blows are going to add up over the course of the game. Uh, and, I, and I thought that happened on – Saturday, where some of those uh, you know two and three yard runs you know ended up being bigger runs, uh, and, and not necessarily you know us doing something different or them, but all of a sudden when you're you know if you're blitzing, you're a step slower getting to the gap, or you're getting you know creased out of the gap or whatnot. You know the the, the line movement is a step slower, so uh, that's what we've got to challenge our guys on is continue to be that type of play early on in the game. I thought Buster did a good job in the game, uh, you know putting them in position to. Uh, not 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 get a bunch of negative. You know, they lead in the country, I think, in negative plays last week. You know, 42 percent, and I think we had six in the game, which is too many for us. But at the same time, it's a lot less than they were doing with that type of operation. So, uh, I thought it was a combination of all those things, and then guys, you know, having a will to win. Great. Uh, <laughs> um, Coach, in scouting the, the North Carolina defense, have you noticed any similarities between what Coach Collins is doing with them versus what maybe he was doing here at the time? 
Yeah, I mean, there, there's there's similarities in every every defense, uh, but each week's a, a different uh, a different game, different game plan. Uh, we got to be prepared for things that, that haven't shown up on tape. I mean, people are always going to add wrinkles and twists to things, whether it be front mechanics, whether it be blitz patterns, you know, third down third down matches or whatnot. Rod. <laughs> A little banged up at the tight end position. Uh, how has it helped there to have some versatile guys that you can <clears throat> throw in there and maybe help out? And what's the current situation there? Yeah, well, everybody's really uh, a couple of guys. A couple of guys that have been out are day to day. Uh, Jackson's day to day right now. Uh, tried to make a go of it on Saturday. He just want he wasn't ready to go. We're not gonna put anybody in the uh, in the way of harm if they're not ready to go. So because uh, he's a tough kid. I mean, he is a tough, tough kid. Uh, you know, then some other guys on the team are kind of a, you know day to day, week to week uh, with there. But we, we lean on our tight ends. We do, we ask a lot of our out of our tight end group. Uh, they're versatile. They have to play at the line of scrimmage, on the ball, off the ball, split wide, a lot of motions, a lot of shifts, a lot of things they do. Uh, so you know, we ha we have a deep group there. We have been hit you know with, with the some injuries at that spot, but we're fully confident the guys are going to be able to come out and play for us this week. Coach, building off what both Chad and Miles asked with, with Jeff, you know, you go up against coaches that you were on staff with, you know, throughout your career, but when he's not that far removed from being here, had a hand in personnel, coach with them, how does that impact at all game plan, anything that you try and do as a staff? Yeah, it really doesn't, not one bit. I mean, I think it's kind of the same question I asked before we played Georgia State with guys that have been on the staff here and we work together. Uh, it doesn't, you know, you, you, you might know a little bit, uh, Philosophically, you know the way they think, but I mean, look at Georgia State. You go out there, you plan for one thing, you get some other things. You have to make adjustments and go play. <laughs> the team has struggled at times coming off wins and and having that consistency with this, the creating the margin, all those things we've talked about this season. What do you kind of look to, I guess, to to keep momentum going and and keep the guys focused going into the game at North Carolina so you don't have those kind of setbacks where you guys lose your momentum in the season? Yeah, well, I mean, nobody wants to lose momentum, you know, when you're, when you're playing a game or, you know, you know, go win, you know, win a game and then lose a game. I mean, that's, but I mean, look, we're playing on the road in the in conference at North Carolina, which has been a traditional rival for Georgia Tech for many, many years. Uh, if, you, if you can't get excited and get, get up for this game, I mean, you got ice water running through your veins. I'm going to steal Rod's running backs question. Uh, Rod? <laughs> sorry, Rod. <laughs> I know. Uh, first of all, updates on Trey Cooley and Maddox, and then um, big day for um, Chad Alexander today, I heard. Yeah. Uh, again, those guys are week to week, day to day, week to week. So uh, you know, we'll see where they're at. Uh, probably won't expect them this week, but you know, we'll see how they progress as the week goes. Uh, yeah, and Chad Alexander, I mean, this guy came in as a true freshman last year, played on all our special teams. Uh, was really raw as a running back. Uh, he's really worked his butt off, you know, over the last year, uh, you know, to become a better running back. And I keep going back to this one one play in a scrimmage in the, in the stadium over the summer where he finally got the ball in his hand. And he he hit it full speed, and and, now, and I pulled him back, out, you know, out of the game. And I was like, man, you, you're, you're, that's it, that's it. We finally saw it. It's like ever since then, and credit you know credit to to Norv and Buster, they've really believed in that kid and spent a lot of time uh, and energy on him, developing him as a running back. Um, and to his work, to, you know, he's the solid solid number two for us. And had some really you know hard runs the other night, explosive runs. You know he, he was one guy that was banged up after the first uh, game or two. So really happy for him. Really happy for him to the point where uh, we we're able to announce to the team today that he'll be going. He'll be a, he'll be a scholarship player for us. Uh, and, and he's he's earned every every bit of that. Patrick. It's pretty cool the way it happened too. To follow up on that same line of questioning on Chad, you know, for a guy that's not that big, he runs powerfully. And is that something that's intuitive, or or is it taught? Maybe and he learns from the guy in front of him. <laughs> it se he seems like he runs like a guy that's twenty or thirty pounds bigger than he. And it looked like some of the DBs were uh, feeling that as well when he ran the other day. Must run in the room. Must be north. <laughs> You know, something that I found encouraging, I guess, about your culture is seeing, like, Tay Seymour and how he's developing. And the Miles played really well coming off the bench as a guy that's been a multi-year <clears throat> starter for you guys. Can you just talk about how those guys have kind of handled those roles and, and embraced them without, like, leg egos or whatever getting in their way? 
Yeah, first off, like, you know, Lamiles Brooks is one, one, I mean, I've, I've known him since ninth grade and started recruiting him when I was in Tuscaloosa when he was in ninth grade and, you know, soaking wet 138 pounds of him. Uh, great kid, great family. Played a lot of football for us here. Uh, played a lot of winning football for us here. Uh, and, you know, it really goes back to the coaches, the, 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 the honesty that they give. You know, as a coach, you, you got to be honest with, with players. You know, you gotta, they have to know why they're, you know, if they're playing, why they're playing, if they're not playing, what they need to do to be able to play, what they're doing well, what they're not doing well. Uh, and, and that way there's no surprises. And, you know, the, the honesty of the, the offensive staff, the defensive staff, you know, of showing guys. So you don't want guys to, to live in a world of, uh, you know, you know, a fake of, of faults where they think they're playing really well or uh, they think they're not playing really well, but they are. So, you know, it's about being honest with guys and, and people know we're, our job is to put the best 11 guys on, on the field uh, in those times. And those guys been able to, been, have been able to split the reps. Uh, we believe in playing guys on defense. So the most critical times in the game, you know, guys are, are fresher than they would be. So uh, I think it's been a good rotation for them. It, you know, it's helped. Uh, it's definitely helped the development of Tay. You know, he, I think he's getting better, week, uh, better and better every week. Time for a couple more, Luke. With Jamal, where have you seen the biggest growth in his game from freshman to sophomore year? Jamal, well, yeah. he's a junior. Oh, oops, sorry. From from, year one, here. He's been here forever. Yeah, from <laughs> last season to this season. Uh, yeah, I think the big thing, biggest thing, is handling setbacks, overcoming a little bit of adversity. Uh, Last year we moved him into running back, and, and it was like things came pretty easy, you know. And this year having to handle a little bit of a, you know, a little bit, little bit of a setback, and seeing him then on on Saturday night be 100% full speed, and the Jamal that 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 we know and love, and, and the fun that he has playing, and the energy that it brings, and the way he affects other people on the football field. Anything else? Okay, thank you. All right, go Jackets. <laughs>